that was going on as the people came there to be registered. And for years, the nation of Israel had been looking and looking for the Messiah. And that night, other than the shepherds, they missed him. But still today, that is the name. They were strong to say you could deal with anything you're going through. The name of Jesus. Here.
day that we will not forget is all about the birthday of the King, your Son, Jesus Christ. Yes, God, this is your Lord. Amen. Well, I asked you to go on a mission this last week. I said whether we were going to be missional at Christmas or invitational. Y'all remember that? And so the mission was to invite people to be a part of uh, the program. Actually, this was in two weeks ago. Uh, that our celebration choir did for us on Sunday and to be a part of lunch. I tell you what, we were quite blessed uh, as it was eventually added up to be, and this is not with any pastoral adjustments at all. Uh, 193 people were here last Sunday, and it was a great blessing. And if you missed it, uh, you haven't missed it entirely, you can go to the church website, uh, or YouTube, actually, and uh, see it there as well. But we're going to talk about the light of God's glory as revealed in His Son, Jesus Christ. And I want you to understand how overwhelming this theme is because when you start the creation story in Genesis chapter 1, most people go, okay, so God did this and God did that. And then he got to the place where he said that there was going to be light. And then later he makes the sun and the moon. It's like, okay, what has been the source of the light up to that point? And we understand that in reality, the glory of God and the brilliance of His glory lights up everything that God chooses to put His life in or with. You say, well, how could the world be so dark? Well, you know the rest of the story in Genesis. We have the situation where, in fact, mankind chooses to go the route of not trusting God. There's this one tree. Tree the knowledge of good and evil. God allowed the potential for evil. Why did he allow it? Everything was glorious. Everything was perfect. Why did God allow the potential of a choice that did not include him? Now, those of you who have been walking with the Lord for a while, you know the answer, don't you? There was no way that you or I could ever choose to love God and to be obedient. We would not have had a choice unless there was the choice for some other behavior. And so there had to be the potential for evil for us to be able to show a love for God. You say, well, you know, I don't know that I get that. Well, let's just go home when you, when you were a kid. If you had been a little robot and your mom or dad had said, okay, today you're going to do this, this, and this. You're going to do it at these times. You would have done everything you were told. And that would have probably seemed wonderful to parents, right? Man. There you go. <laughs> I'm going to have a revival today on that. And yet the fact of the matter is, is that a child can only show their love through obedience when they have a choice. And so as we've been talking about uh, in our Wednesday night uh, small group, the idea that God actually had to put the possibility for darkness and for evil so that the truth of His light and the light of His way could be seen by choice. Don't ever let anyone tell you that free will doesn't matter to God. He has given us the ability to choose Him or not to choose Him. And yet the consequences of choosing to turn away from Him are not under your control to change. And so as we look at this today, we want to talk about the importance of the light of his glory. In Luke chapter 2, we read this passage earlier. And we want you to see that 
God's glory explodes into various situations. And in this situation here, you have shepherds out in the fields. They're watching the flocks. And the angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them. And the glory, the glory of the Lord shone around them. Now, this is a, an instant where God, in a, in a split-second moment, He splits open the heavens, He puts angels there, they have this message, and His glory is amazing. To the point that the shepherds are filled with fear. As you look on in uh, verse 10, they have to be told not to be afraid because the reason for this point of his glory being revealed in such a powerful way was to bring good news of great joy. You see, they knew that Messiah was going to come someday. The Old Testament prophecies had pointed to that reality and they were anxiously awaiting that possibility. And so when they receive a sign, I want you to know that if it had been kings, princes, you know, people in authority, they would have been looking for a Messiah. Big white charger of a horse and, you know, some big burly guy that could come in and just wipe out the Romans and destroy all the enemies and bring Israel to the height of its glory over the whole earth. That's what they were waiting for. And so what's the sign that you're going to find a baby wrapped in cloths <coughs> in the manger? What kind of a sign is that? That's not the sign we're looking for. We're looking for something spectacular. We're looking for something unbelievable. Well, they get a little bit more of that in verse 13. <laughs> and suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying. And here's the message. Glory to God in the highest. There's that word again. Glory. Glory. Now, as we reflect in times of worship that we want to bring glory to God, what does that mean except to recognize our God for who He is and how holy and how sinless, how perfect, how loving, how gracious, how merciful. We acknowledge the characteristics and things of our God. We lift glory to Him. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace among men with whom He is pleased. And so how do we get those men with whom God is well pleased? We get those people through the reality of Messiah. The Jesus who comes and brings light. And so as you think about this kingdom of light that's coming into the world, you remember many times we've read from John chapter 1, and this is not going to be there, Kathy, in John chapter 1, verse 14, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw His glory. Glory is of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. This glory is going to be not new, it's going to be established in a way that people living in darkness have never experienced before. So if you look.